Here we're going to calculate inverse functions, but we're going to look at examples in which our functions are not one-to-one -one and we have to restrict the domain. So here's our first example. It says restrict the domain of this given function, looks like a quadratic function, so that its inverse is a function. Okay, so if I'm looking at, let's, let's first start with our f of x, okay? And that's x squared minus 3. And before I even worry about restricting the domain, let's just kind of graph the function and let's try to calculate its inverse and graph that as well. Um, and then we'll worry about the domain and hopefully that will shed some light on, on why we restrict the domain. So I'm going to write it in terms of x and y. I'm going to switch x and y. And then I'm going to solve for the new y. So I'm going to add 3 to each side. And I'm going to take the square root of each side. And so this, this right here should be my should be my inverse, okay? So if I have my given function f of x there, let's write f inverse of x in red, and it looks like it's the square root function shifted to the left three units. Now let's graph both of these and see if they are reflection over the line y equals x. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my little imaginary line. It's like a good graphical check to see if our functions are inverses, okay? So here's y equals x. Now, let me graph the original. I'm gonna graph the quadratic function shifted down three units, it looks like. So if I shift down three units, and I'm graphing this quadratic, not, not perfectly, just getting a, a rough sketch here. So that's our f of x function. Now our f inverse of x function is the square root function shifted to the left three units, okay? So if I were to take the square root function shifted to the left three units, it should look something like this, okay? Not a perfect drawing, but decent. And what you might be noticing is, you, is you're looking at this, you're saying, okay, if this red function, this inverse right here, which I can label as the inverse, if it's supposed to be a reflection of the original over this purple line, it doesn't really look like it right now. And so the reason that is, is because this original function that we have shown in blue is not one-to-one. -one. Notice, it does not pass the horizontal line test. If I drew a horizontal line, it, it crosses it in multiple places, right? Meaning, we have certain points that have the same y value but two different x values. And so what we do is we limit the domain of the original, meaning, what part of this, basically, could I chop off to make it a one-to-one -one function? And hopefully you're saying, well, if we could just chop off this part that's over here, then the part shown in blue would be one-to-one, -one, and in fact, it would also make it a reflection between it and its inverse. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to limit the domain to get rid of this part of our original function that keeps it from being one-to-one. -one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, we really want to keep the part from here to the right. In other words, I want to keep my domain, my domain is going to be x such that x is greater than or equal to 0. If I keep 0 and greater for my x values, that means I'm getting rid of all this. Let me just kind of erase it. Now what we have, and let me relabel since we mixed that part, is we have our original function with a limited domain. And if I kept going on it, it would look like this. And then we have our inverse one. And you can see that now they are inverses. Now they are a reflection over y equals x. So sometimes you have to limit the domain of the original so that the inverse is a function. Let's do another example. Now in this one, we've got our original function. It looks like a square root function. So if I have f of x equals the root of x plus 5, we're going to first calculate the inverse. Let's do that first. I'm going to write it in terms of y and x. I'm going to flip x and y. Um, in order to get rid of the square root sign, I'm going to square both sides. And then I'm going to subtract 5 from each side. So we have this. We have y equals x squared minus 5. Okay? Now, I'm going to kind of come up here and write it in a different color so that we now can say, okay, that's going to be my inverse equals x squared minus 5. So 
Let's graph the original first. It looks like it's going to be our square root function, but shifted to the left five units. It's going to look something like that, okay, without being super accurate. But then our inverse function, if I shift it down five units, Okay, and we've got a problem. So here was our original function. I'll label it as f of x. And here is what we calculated to be our inverse function, f inverse of x. But you can see that they're not inverses because it's not a reflection over the line y equals x. Now here we've got to think a little bit creatively because in the previous example, we limited the domain of our original function so that the inverse was a function. But now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to limit the domain of our inverse so that it is an inverse of the original. Meaning we're using the same logic, but now we're using it on our new function. Once again, I'm looking right over here and I'm thinking, okay, if I could just chop off this part over here, then our inverse is one to one and it would be a graphical inverse of the original. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit my domain of the inverse. So our domain here is going to be x such that x is greater than or equal to 0. I guess in both of my examples we did x is greater than 0. That's just a coincidence. But if I were to get rid of all this by limiting the domain, now we can see, oh, okay, this red graph was reflected from the blue graph. So sometimes you have to limit the domain of your original and sometimes you have to limit the domain of your inverse. But remember, our goal is to create one-to-one -one functions so that on a graph, they appear to be inverses because they're reflected over y equals x.